how you doing? We are back with another amazing session on putting out the fires of online teaching and PD. And as we've been exploring lots of just general practices of, of survival and education, whether we are face to face, hybrid, online, a mixture, bouncing back and forth, and who knows what the future brings, you know, we want to be able to, to start to, to dovetail into some specific categories. And so as we've been looking at maybe some tech tools and we've been looking at some pedagogy, we also want to get into a field that I'm very passionate about and I live and breathe and love is, is STEM and computer science. And so this session is going to fall underneath the umbrella of, of STEM and computer science with a amazing guest. Um, and we're going to be talking about an amazing little tool that many of you are probably familiar with and just lots of there's just so much going on. It's just so exciting. And so um, Jacqueline, I'm already I'm already jumping ahead of myself. I'm already like, like a squirrel just bouncing everywhere because I know there's so much I want to get to. So let's let's yeah, just, no let me pause. Let's get to you. Who are you? What do you do? Why am I speaking with you today? Hi everyone. My name is Jacqueline Russell. I'm the program manager on the Microsoft Make Code team. Um, and uh, Aaron, you and I have talked before. Um, a couple of times, and I'm a huge fan of everything that you do to bring STEM education to, you know, millions of students. So, um, big fan of of everything you do. And, and for those of folks who may not be familiar with MakeCode, um, MakeCode is basically a free, open source, uh, online computing education platform, um, and we really focus on inclusive um, and accessible computer science education. Um, and we we do that through physical computing as as well as sort of game based uh, computing. Um, so and I can talk maybe a little bit more about um, what kind of tools we have. Maybe let me just share my screen. Would that be OK, Aaron? Yeah, absolutely. And while you're doing that, I think, you know, as people, if, if you're familiar with MakeCode, this is going to be really helpful because there's there's lots of new features and lots of new updates to the not just software, but also hardware. And if you're brand new and you've not heard of MakeCode or maybe you have and you haven't explored it, this is a time like it's a no brainer as, as we are trying to figure out how to create engagement, how to inspire kids, how to create, our, you know, meet and reach our standards that we're being asked to do. And how do we do that when we may not always have kids face to face five days a week like we've been used to. And so this is a, a, a platform, you know, I sound like a salesman, but I don't mean it that way because it's it, it's accessible. It works. It can be done with kids at home. You can do it while you're in your classroom. And I know you're going to get into some of that, Jacqueline, but it's 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 one that I think you have to have in your toolbox among many other things out there in order to be successful because there's just so much support, a strong community and lessons and projects and everything you need to get started. So, um, all right, there's my 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 elevator pitch for the amazing. <laughs> it was great. Go. I'm gonna hire you on, Aaron. You can yeah. go and evangelize <laughs> for us. So, um, so yeah, so this is our our website. So if you just um, go to makeco.com, you'll find all of our tools and resources and curriculum here. This is just a site about what is MakeCode. Essentially, we are um, we have both you know drag and drop block based coding as well as text based JavaScript and Python now um, programming languages that kids can use. Um, and as I mentioned before, we support um, physical computing, so things like the Microbit or Circuit Playground Express, um, as well as game based coding. So um, with Minecraft or uh, with our um, 2D retro game engine called MakeCode Arcade, um, as well as some robotics too. So all of these tools are here on the website. Um, I think, Aaron, maybe what we could talk about um, today is the Microbit, because yes, they have just announced this week um, the latest update to the Microbit hardware. Um, and so maybe we can talk a little bit more about that. And I know you've had experience with the Microbit as well, right? Yes, yes. And I know there's lots of classrooms and teachers that, that I work with and support in Iowa, but also just across uh, the U.S. And, and, and the globe in some reaches, you know, are, are familiar with, with Microbit. And one of the things as we get into the new Microbit that's coming, which is awesome, you know, I think as, as people are, are listening in and, and maybe again, just like make if you've heard about it or maybe you're thinking about it and you're not sure or this is one of the beauties, and, and we can show this here as, as Jack was sharing her screen, is you know you can use the simulator. And so I know as, as a lot of you are struggling with how do I still do the things I used to do in my makerspace or my STEM lab, you know, the, 
the micro bit is, is a nice way with make code because you can do that stuff with the simulator, you know, where the kids might be at home one day and then at school the next, they can still continue the learning journey, which I think is a really great feature, um, you know, that not everybody has um, that, that that allows the teaching and learning to continue regardless of the, the scenarios that, that we're being faced with. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Um, and just to catch everyone up, so for those of you who don't know uh, what the micro bit is, I'm just holding up um, one right here. So you can think of it as sort of a tiny programmable computer. <laughs> so, um, and uh, they're very small and cheap. Um, it was created in 2015. It was a joint partnership um, between the BBC and the UK, uh, Microsoft, Arm, uh, Samsung, and a few other companies. Um, and they were basically looking for a way to create a more inclusive approach to computer science education. And so they created this little micro bit here uh, and they distributed a million of these things uh, all across the UK to all of the year seven students. Um, and they ran studies, you know, before and after. And the results were quite impressive. Um, so I think one of the um, statistics was that um, you know, they saw a 70% increase in interest among girls, especially uh, to continue studying computer science after they had been exposed to the micro bit. Um, and certainly, you know, um, there was all like, I think it was 95% of all the students said that they really enjoyed sort of the hands on aspect of computing with the micro bit. And, you know, I'm sure Aaron, you have um, stories yourself, but I've seen it in the classroom where you know, there's just this moment of magic when, you know, you see what you've coded on, a, you know, the screen sort of come to life in a very tangible, physical way on on a micro bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even if it's as simple as, as getting a light to blink on and off, you know, in this case, the micro bit's got the 25 LEDs and I mean, such a simple task brings such joy. I mean, I watch it happen time and time again, whether, you know, working with adults or students, there's something about when the real world, something in the real world comes to life because of, of some code you wrote. You know, it's amazing when it happens on the screen for those that just love to deep dive of coding, but that's not everybody, you know, right. that that tangible real world, like aha moment that something actually yeah. worked because of your code just is, is, is what's needed to get people moving to that next step to keep diving deeper. That's right, yeah, and I'm just showing a page here on the Microbit website with a bunch of research statistics that they've done, you know, around the Microbit and around sort of physical computing in general as just a more, you know, inclusive way of, you know, reaching out to, to students with different backgrounds and pulling them into, um, in, in, into interest in computer science. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so, um, feel free to check out uh, that research. Um, one other thing I always, you know, I always get the question, I don't know if you do too, Erin, but um, what's the difference between the micro bit and an Arduino or Raspberry Pi? I don't know, do you get that question a lot? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder if we compare, can compare responses. So I always usually just say, oh, it's, it's very, very much the same thing, very similar, but the micro bit is much, much simpler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel. Yeah, I, I I call it. I don't know if it's it's the politically correct way to say it. I like to me, it's like the gateway drug, um, yeah. because you can have instant success. You can easily build confidence within the user, and the possibilities truly are endless. Like you go beyond the micro bit if you don't want to. Like the, there there's plenty of learning there for that. But then if you want to start to scale, like some kids really start to do want to dive deep and understanding, mm -hmm. you know, how to build like a complete computer. Well, now let's get into the Raspberry Pi and maybe explore yeah. that a little bit, you know, and that's, I, I see that that's, that's how we can start to differentiate and extend some of the learning, but you can, you've got everything you need within the micro bit and all the bells and whistles that you could add to a micro bit to be content. But I see it as like, let's start here. Let's get some quick wins, then let's dive deep and then see what we need. I love that explanation. I'm I'm stealing that. No, right. that's oh. that's totally right. I feel like, you know, um, with an Arduino board, students spend a lot of time wiring up the sensors, you know, attaching uh, lights and other components and stuff. And that's part of the fun, right? Is building like this circuit board, um, but it is fairly complex and it can be, you know, finicky. Um, wiring up everything. And so there is a lot of sort of hardware set up before 
you know, you get to the coding. Um, and then as you mentioned, the Raspberry Pi, I mean, that's a full computer, right? It's a computer operating system running on those boards. And so, uh, so it is very different. You could you, like literally just plug in a keyboard and a, and a um, screen and use it as a full computer. So, uh, so it's very powerful, um, but also more complex, obviously, than this little teeny device, you know, which is, um, which is only $16 for the kit too. So it's very cheap. Yeah. Um, and it's super easy, right? You just plug it into the computer and away you go. So yep. And, yep. yeah, and all the sensors and everything is all on board. So, but I like your, your uh, definition of a gateway drug <laughs> into physical computing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I love it because even if you dive into say Arduino or Raspberry Pi or, or whatever your, your, your choice might be, the micro bit works with all of it. Like to me, then it all of a sudden now you're, you're extending, you know, and we've seen kids create projects where they're using the micro bit, you know, as a, a little trigger device as they're hacking Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi. I mean, you can just yeah. continue to just build upon one another, which is just, again, more excitement, you know, for, for those kids that really just want to get to that next level and, and, and dive deep. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So, um, so yeah, so going back to you know what we talked about before, so the Microbit Education Foundation, which is the nonprofit that runs the Microbit, um, they just announced this week the next version of the Microbit. Um, and so um, you know this device is going to be available to everyone starting in mid-November. Um, I did get a couple of early versions of the device here. Um, it's going to be the same price point as the old devices, so no price changes. Um, and like I said, it'll be available to resellers, you know, mid-November-ish timeframe. So, um, but I, I'll show you here what um, the the new and the old ones. So the blue is the old one, and the um, pink one is the new one. Um, and basically, you can see it looks very similar, right? right. Um, it's no big changes. Um, same size, um, same, same existing components. So the, the new one has the same components as this one, but they have added a couple new things to, um, to the new one. So I'm just gonna turn on the power on this. Um, and you can see um, that they've added sound. So that's a big thing, right? Yeah, that's been huge. Oh, can you hear that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so they've added a speaker. That's a cool little twinkle sound. Um, they've also added capacitive touch on this front facing. Ooh, um, nice. So you can use it as a button. Um, and here, let me actually move my camera over so I can show you. Um, can you see this better? Oh yeah, yep, yep. Okay, great. So yeah, so this is the new one. Um, I guess the first thing you'll see is that the edge connector looks different, right? It's got these divots in it. Um, so that just, they did that so that you could um, attach crock clips a little bit easier. So I don't know if you use crock clips, Aaron, with the micro bit to like attach servo motors or things like that. Um, and so it's just a nicer hold for these little, um, you know, these little clips to clip onto. Yeah, it's, it's such a, a subtle little change but man, it's going to make life just so much easier because anyone that's used Microbit at some point, you've probably been frustrated. You, you double checked your your connections, your code, yeah. everything. You go to run it and you forgot. You didn't see that 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 the clip fell off or whatever. It fell so, off, oh, right? It, it's just it doesn't seem like a big deal, but man, I saw that. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, <laughs> it is. It is much nicer. Um, so so they so they did that. Um, the other thing you'll notice is this logo thing, this gold logo. So the old one had just a regular painted logo. This one has an actual gold logo. So you can actually touch it and it acts like a button. It's a capacitive touch pin. That's so, awesome. Um, and uh, for some reason, not for some reason, like I missed that. I, like, I've like I've read like 37 announcement posts and blogs. And for some reason I did not, I, I was either reading too fast or not processing. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, they <laughs> so much attention to detail, right? Um, and so they just added another input um, just by using the logo there. Um, and then I'm just going to flip this over really quick so you can see the back. Um, you'll see it, the speaker is this big thing right here, right? 
So this is the speaker. It's actually quite a good speaker. Um, I've been testing the the sound quality and it's um, it's very good um, and you can play lots of different things with it. Um, it's also got a microphone. So I don't know if you can see um, this little gold thing right here. Yep. That's the microphone so it can detect sound and sound levels. Um, and then um, they've also turned this reset button into an, uh, a sleep or a power button, which is really nice. I don't know if, um, if you use any of the batteries or the battery packs without the on off switch, that was always a pain to turn yes. off your micro bit. <laughs> so, yes. so that's, yeah. that's just, nice. And of course they've, they've updated the processor as well. Um, so it's a more powerful processor. Um, yeah, it just it just makes life a lot easier, especially for those that are getting started. You know, we you you get going, you get through some of the the beginner tasks or or levels of projects, and then the kids are like, oh, but I want to do this, and so then now you're trying to find a set of headphones, which isn't overly difficult, but it's just one more thing, and then yeah, you know, exactly. Why, what was a good learning lesson of how where to clip on the end of the of of the headphones, but anymore most devices most people don't have headset jacks and it's just that's like a, a lost tech so to have it built in is also nice because the more you do these workshops you're like well just bring your headsets well most people's are, are bluetooth or you know a, a usb c or you know yeah. it's, all that is just having that all built in just makes it so much smoother and and just easier to get to those things that, that we know work with especially with kids Agreed. Yeah. And sound is so powerful, right? It's such a great sort of output for these types of devices. Um, and I know that Microbit Foundation also has um, has um, ambitions to use AI and machine learning to recognize sound patterns and things like that and start to introduce students to artificial intelligence through through sound and sound patterns. So that's also very cool. Yeah. Um, really quick, if you're curious about what exactly is on the new microbit, um, if you go to tech.microbit.org and just do a search, or I think there's a link on, the, on their main site um, for the latest revision, they got this really nice page that shows you, like, here's the current microbit, here's the latest one, um, and the differences between it um, and all the different um, things on it. They've got like this nice little microphone uh, um, indicator. So it lets you know if the microphone is on, <laughs> which is nice. So yeah, yeah. so so it's just um, uh, just I would say incremental changes, no big changes to the micro bit, but really just some nice um, refinements, I would say, and additional capabilities. Um, and so I don't know, um, do we have time to do a quick demo? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's 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 see it in action, and and maybe before you do the demo, because yeah. I think one thing that's gonna, I think it's easy to overlook, especially for some people that um, maybe have been using the the first version. I know it's not technically the first version, but the the latest version up until this new one comes out. Yeah. Um, is a, a, especially for those who've been using Make Code, they may or may not have missed it depending on their grade level with the kids they use. But could you just show them really quick? I, I think most people get where the blocks are. And I think most people have seen JavaScript, but most people are probably like, I don't know what that is, so I'm just never gonna go there. <laughs> but, but could you show them that, that how that could also be Python? Because yeah. that seems to be a lot of conversation, I think in our state in Iowa, but I know in other states as computer science is starting to scale out K-12, what I see is like as a district or a, or a school, you could have these micro bits where you're not having to teach a new platform over and over and over again. You could start with block-based coding with your younger kids, and then you can move into Python with your older kids, depending on if that's what your goals are. But I know lots of schools are looking at Python, and now you, you don't have to teach yet another platform on top of another platform. You could stay within this ecosystem, but yet still tailor to the needs and, and, and the skill sets of the students. So um, yeah, if you could, yeah, right there. So. I kind of yeah, absolutely. I mean, one yeah. thing that um, we think that Mako does a really good job at is trying to like create that bridge between the drag and drop block based programming interfaces and sort of more of the real world text based programming. Because right now, I think it's it's a big problem. Like once students have mastered, you know, um, Scratch or some of these other block based um, editors, then it's like, oh, I have to start all over again with 
Python or with JavaScript or with another, um, you know, text-based programming language. But, um, and so we're really trying to make the transition easier for students. So you notice like I can do edits in either or, and those edits will show up um, in both editors, right? So if I wanted to like do a show string in blocks, I can toggle over to Python and I'll see that same um, line of code here that I've added and vice versa. If I start typing um, some code here, like um, maybe I wanna do uh, basic dot show LEDs, um, then you know all of that code will be um, shown in blocks as well. Um, and so it's just a nice way for kids to kind of understand how you know what they code in blocks actually does translate into like real code. Um, and then we've added some other affordances, like we still have the toolbox. So if they don't know, you know, what code does, you know, they can click on it and read. Oh, this is a show string. This is what it looks like, and you know, in text, I can drag and drop it into my code editor. Um, nice things like that that just uh, you know give kids a bit of um, uh, I don't I don't know maybe training wheels. Is that the right? <laughs> training yeah. wheels as they're like learning uh, a text-based programming language. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what was I going to I was going to show you the new microbit blocks. So again, most of the new blocks are, um, are, are basically um, have to do with sound and, and music. So if I go to my input toolbox drawer, you'll notice there's some new blocks here. There's one that's on loud sound. This is using the microphone, right? So it has that microphone. And so um, this event will trigger when it hears a loud sound. So um, I can put in um, a, a play sound block. So you'll see that we've got some cool, cute little sounds. But the one I was playing before was this twinkle sound. But there's just some cool sound effects, I guess. Um, here. So if I was to download this program now onto my microbit. Um, oh, another thing I just wanted to mention that we've had for a little while, but I know a bunch of educators don't know about it, is something called Web USB. This is a, oh, you can hear it. Can you hear it? Yep. Yeah. And you'll notice the little um, microphone. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah. LED is on. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little bit farther away from the microphone. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so there you have the play sound or on loud sound blocks, um, the logo pressed. So if I press the logo, maybe I'll show a heart. Um, and then let's see what else. Um, let's show you some of the music blocks. So this is a nice one, this play melody block. Um, you can select it and basically create and then change the beats. Let's say if we want 200 beats per minute. Um, and so, yeah, some nice sound blocks are available here. Um, and again, if I, um, WebUSB allows you to pair a microbit device with your uh, web browser. And that way you don't need to do the whole drag and drop of the file downloads. I don't know if anyone familiar with that, it can be a pain, especially for students who are trying to find in their downloads folder where they put their latest program. Yes. Um, this, yeah, this is a nice way it just happens automatically when you click download, it'll it'll pair to your microbit device. Uh, um, that's huge because I feel yeah. like, especially in, in a lot of trainings as your people getting started and then I always, I'm always like, gosh, how's this looked in for a whole class? And, and kids are usually, they pick up on it right away, but that is usually one of the biggest stumbling blocks, If you, especially if you're brand new to all this. If this is you yeah. know, your first time with physical computing, maybe some coding, and then you're also then trying to realize like, geez, I don't even know when I hit download where stuff goes, which is all good learning, but man, it's like trying to find the file and drag it. And then, so that's yeah. just nice that it automatically takes care of it. I mean, that just, that just solves a barrier you know, that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Yeah, exactly. So you can't, you probably can't hear it, but um, this is the, my downloaded program. I don't, you can't hear we it. We can so. hear, we can hear a little bit, yeah. Okay. Well, I just pressed the logo. The heart came up. Um, 
and uh, and it's playing some sounds a little bit. Um, my microphone, fortunately, is on the other side of my desk. So yes. <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I would say, you know, when um, when you can get a hold of these devices later on this calendar year, um, play around with some of these music blocks um, and some of the microphone blocks um, and the the little capacitive touch logo. Um, that's always a nice one. But but everything, you know, we support both versions of the microbit, so um, you know educators don't have to worry about which version of the microbit they have. If they go to Make Code, we'll um, we'll do all of the versioning for you on the back end. So that's something that you don't have to worry yeah. about. Yeah, and then probably maybe a dumb question, but I'm sure a lot of people will ask too. So I look at like I have a lot of micro bits and I have a lot of yeah. the, you know, extra peripherals. So, you know, if, if I'm plugging in, you know, through, you know, the the connector down there, my own microphone mm -hmm. or my own speaker, those blocks, will those still work uh, with those? You know, if, if I have the, I'm going to call it the original micro bit. I know micro yeah. been around for a while, but will, will, will those still work? Those blocks work with, with that or is those blocks only with the new version? They will work. Um, okay. So um, you'll notice that the edge connector, all of these pins down here, these haven't changed. So yeah. all of the accessories that you may have that are shields where you like plug it in, those will all work with the new version. And then any extensions that you have for the old version of the microbit will still work with the old version of the microbit, right? Nothing has changed. Um, the only thing that may happen is as new hardware accessory manufacturers create new accessories that take advantage of the new microbit capabilities or processor, those extensions may not work with sure. the older version. Right. I'm microbit. just I'm just thinking of those teachers that you know have class sets of you know of external speakers. You know, there's lots of those extra oh, yeah. accessories. You know, so just. I don't want them to, to freak out because sometimes that happens. There, there, there's an upgrade to something and then yeah. everything you used to have kind of just goes away and obviously. Oh, no. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right. No, no, but no. We, we work in work. education, Aaron. <laughs> I, know. I got it. <laughs> yeah, no, everything, everything that teachers have should still work and you can, you know, what I would say, it's nice because this isn't a complete departure from the older version, right? Um, and so you can like slowly start to sprinkle in some of these newer micro bits and just right. to see and test the waters, but still use like your old, you know, your existing micro bit set. Um, and it should work between, you know, between students and everything. So, um, so yeah, so there's no feeling like you have to rush out and like, you know, throw away all your old micro bits and buy new ones. No, 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 no. Uh, this is just sort of what I would say an evolution of um, of the existing micro bit. No, it's wonderful I, and I love it and I appreciate you taking some time to, to share and document through some of those things that I know many of us are excited to get our hands on it and get rocking and rolling and those that are, you know, as always, we, we a lot of people, a lot of teachers are scrambling to find that grant money to find the funding to get that stuff for them to also realize that between now and November, if you have that window of time, if you can just hold off long enough because it's always better to get the newer one, but you know, you know, yeah. beggars can't be choosers either. So, um, and, yeah. You know, as you were, as you were saying, Aaron, like a lot of times you don't in this, you know, remote learning environment, you don't necessarily need the um, the hardware, right? Like kids can program you know, here in the simulator too. So there, you know, you don't have to have the hardware. I would say that the hardware is really nice because it's super engaging um, and you can build stuff with it. <laughs> right. But if you want, you know, if, if students still, still need to complete assignments and do coding work, they can still use a simulator to test out their code and see what that looks like. Yeah, and I know every district has different policies, so I know what I'm about to say isn't going to solve all the things that educators are dealing with, but I know for a lot of districts I support, we've been really focusing on spending a lot of the time when the kids are remote, 
trying to work through their code, work through some of those learning mm -hmm. lessons. And then when they're in the school, that's when they're doing more of the time on the building, you know, if they're able to have accessible to materials, because you can't expect every kid to have the hot glue gun, the proper cutting tools or whatever it is yeah. that they're trying to design and build. So using that time, that's when you come into class and ask questions for troubleshooting, but you're doing a lot of that hands-on building, knowing that they can jump on it and they can test their code with the simulator and work through, because there's so many lessons and guides and exam. I mean, that's the beauty of the micro bit and make code is there's so much out there that you can once you teach kids how to be savvy like to kind of beg borrow and steal to kind of figure out mm -hmm. how things work you know like that that's learning in and of itself and so it's not like you're like hey go go learn how to do this and there, there's no guides you know like right. the whole, yeah. <laughs> everything is there if you just yeah. kind of know how to operate yeah i mean that's a good point on on the um make code homepage we do have tons of tutorials and these are like step-by-step -step tutorials and either blocks python or javascript that will you know guide students through building a project um as well as some you know we try to make most of our projects here um accessible meaning you only need like cardboard or sort of household materials um so so that is still kind of a, a possibility um even even at home so so yeah so lots of uh, lots of resources and materials on um on the make code microbit uh website as well um one last thing i wanted to just mention aaron i'm sorry yeah. i know we're probably running out of time no, but <laughs> it's fine it's awesome it's, it's so uh, good. one thing i wanted to mention that um because i mentioned you know the new um, Microbit V2 um, has a um, improved processor um, that makes it um, able to do a lot of more advanced, um, you know, um, things, uh, run more advanced programs, use more, you know, advanced accessories and things. And so one of the things that we're really excited about is um, the ability for a Microbit to be compatible with MakeCode Arcade. So I know um, I mentioned at the beginning that MakeCode Arcade is one of our code editors. It's a retro arcade development environment so, that kids can, so yeah, code their own, um, you know, retro arcade games. Um, but so with this new microbit, we can actually use it as sort of a game cartridge. So with an accessory that's called a MakeCode Arcade Shield, um, you can actually program your games on the microbit, use the microbit as a game cartridge, stick it into the shield, play your games, you know, just using that screen and buttons, and then, you know, take your microbit out, you know, reprogram your game. So that's also very, very cool too. That just upgrades the uh, Mako Jam competitions to the next level, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> Everyone swap their uh, cartridges around and play games. I guess back when we, right. when, once yeah. we get to a point where we're able to do that, uh, you know, with all sanitation rules uh, put in place, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, well, awesome, yeah. Jacqueline. This has been this has been awesome. I mean, I know yeah. people are be excited. It's going to generate lots of conversation and questions, and you know, I think for for a lot of people, the, the the challenge between now and depending on the time when they when they get to check this out for for the, the on demand learning is to get into that make code and just start to do some of the micro bit lessons, even if you don't have one. If you have one then dive mm -hmm. in there and then start to push your boundaries of learning. If you're new, just get in there and start to tinker around with it, see what's available, do some of those levels that, that they're at a level that you're comfortable with, you know, and kind of see what's out there. Because I think once you start to dive into it, uh, possibilities are, are endless. And I think even those I'm thinking about, even like elementary teachers, this is also a great way to weave in your other content standards. And that's a whole conversation for another day, but oh, as, yeah. We've been putting a lot of focus on, on STEM and computer science. You know, I know I've worked with teachers and I know you have too, but for those that are like, but what about I have X amount of days for language arts and for math or right. this and that, like this can be part of an ecosystem that knocks out your science, your literacy, your math and your computer science and whatever else, you know, and, and right. it, it's a great way to bring the engagement of, of some of those standards that sometimes can be hard to get kids excited about. So yeah, yeah, agreed. Really good. So. Jacqueline, thank you so much. I know if if, if people want to want to learn more or or reach out um, either mm -hmm. to you or just be on top of it, I mean we'll have lots of of links in in the resources for the things. But are there any any places that you would encourage them to? Uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, I'm on the Twitter sphere. Um, so just um, at Jackster, feel free to uh, direct message me or just um, ping me on there. 
Um, we also have uh, Make Code Forums. So um, it's uh, forums.makecode.com if you want to you know, join the community and kind of learn what other people are doing with uh, Make Code. Um, and then for the Microbit too, the Microbit um, Foundation has a very extensive community of um, educators. So on their web website, microbit.org, um, there's lots of places to learn and engage. Awesome. Yeah, so definitely for those listening, we'll get all that stuff linked into the PD. You, you know the rodeo, you know the routine, so check it all out. You know where to find all that. And uh, again, Jack, this has been great. I can't uh, yeah. wait for people to, to get their hands on the new micro bit and uh, see what the uh, the new learning is going to bring everyone's way. So, so thank you for taking some time to share that. Yeah, thanks for having me, Aaron. Yes, thank you. All right. Bye.